audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Foundations. So you had this mindset of absolute separation, no contamination. Remember, if something is clean, is touched by something that is unclean, the clean thing becomes unclean. Foundations. Understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. In Bible times, leprosy was a death sentence for anyone unfortunate enough to be diagnosed with it. And it also meant rejection and isolation. Leprosy is also a biblical symbol for sin. And in this program, we're going to be learning about the connection of this spiritual leprosy with the Messiah. You know, I think all of us at some point has known what it's like to be treated like a leper. That obviously is meaning that you're suddenly in isolation, ostracized Mm. from people, and it's a very, very lonely place. And it's horrible to go through that kind of a situation. Absolutely terrible. But Jesus also experienced something like that as well. Now, the Talmud. The Talmud is um, religious Jewish writings or books. And it's very sacred Jewish literature. It's not inspired scripture. Um, but it's used by the Jewish people and Jewish religious leaders to help assist them in understanding and interpreting the Bible, the Torah. And in the same way that we have commentaries and expositors who unpack the scripture and, you know, study Bibles, that's basically what the Talmud is like. And the Talmud describes there as being a leper messiah. And this is going to make you think about what it was like when we talked about Isaiah 53 and how they've tried to reinterpret it to mean the Jewish people Mm. instead of the messiah when it's always been the messiah. And so this description in the Talmud about a leper messiah includes a story that the messiah, when he came, would actually be found caring for lepers. So here are a couple of quotes from the Talmud and what it says about messiah when he comes. It says, his name is the leper scholar, as it is written. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him a leper smitten of God and afflicted. That's basically wow. like a requote of the yeah. Isaiah 53. Yeah. There it is in the Talmud saying that it's talking about Messiah. Here's another quote. It says, when will the Messiah come? Go and ask him himself, was his reply. Where is he sitting? At the entrance. And by what sign may I recognize him? He is sitting among the poor lepers. Now, again, these are quotes from the Talmud Mm. and, you know, talking about the Messiah and that he would, it goes on actually to say that he would be carefully bandaging the wounds of lepers instead of actually shunning them. And this was an unprecedented kind of um, belief system to have about the Messiah. And that is because if someone in ancient times was diagnosed with leprosy, as you mentioned right at the beginning, You're talking about a death sentence. Mm. There was no coming back from this. And it didn't just mean a death sentence. It meant being ostracized away from society because nobody wanted a leper to get near them because then they'd contract the disease. It was a highly contagious thing. So this meant ostracization away from society until you died. That was your lot for the rest of your life, however long it might be. Now, there were quite a lot of laws in the Mosaic Covenant, in Leviticus particularly, that explain who and what was deemed to be acceptable and unacceptable, what was deemed to be clean or unclean, touchable or untouchable. Those who were deemed to be untouchable or unclean or unacceptable included lepers, but it also meant menstruating women for a temporary amount of time, uh, and, and also sometimes people who had physical defects. And you think, why would that be? That doesn't sound like the God that I know and love. Well, when it comes to the perfection of God, and this mostly had to do with coming into the tabernacle or the temple, that kind of thing. When it comes to the perfection of God, we all fall far short of that. But basically what it was saying that only perfection could actually be, could stand to be in his presence. So before a a person who doesn't have any kind of physical um, disability before just a normal person could come in, they have to go and offer sacrifices so that they'd be covered and have their sin um, covered through that particular sacrifice. Otherwise, they wouldn't make it either. But when it came to physical imperfections, 
Only the most perfect could be in God's presence. That's why he also said when it comes to the animal sacrifice, make sure it's not defiled. Make yeah. sure there's no imperfections in it. So this wasn't had nothing to do with whether or not God loved these people or cared for them. In fact, if you read all throughout the Bible, you find that he was constantly saying, care for these people, do good for these people, provide for them, make sure that they're looked after. But when it came to the perfection of God and the presence of God, no, it was only the most perfect or those without physical imperfections that could come. Even the court of the Gentiles, um, when it came to the tabernacle, the temple, you had the court of the Gentiles, but because Gentiles were uncircumcised, they were not part of the covenant people, which means they couldn't go past the court of the Gentiles. So you could have a perfect specimen of a Gentile and they couldn't get past the front door. Mm. So it, it, this was all about this perfection of God not whether or not God loved us. Okay, so I just needed to make yeah. that very clear. But Leviticus goes into excruciating detail, actually, talking about things that were contagious or, you know, anything that was um, a corruption, basically leprosy, which was a symbol of sin, and how they had to be outside the community, outside the parameters or the fences of the community. But it was also things like mold. Uh, spots on your body, a white hair growing out of a spot, and all that. We kind of think, what is this? But if you actually sort of look at this in broad picture, you get this pattern that follows, that that just seems to appear about all this sort of imperfection, these corruptions, these um, defilements that make it so that they just simply cannot be within proximity to the perfection of God. So with all of these details, Leviticus, you know, goes on and talks about, you know, the blind, the lame were not allowed to be in the temple courts. And we mentioned Gentiles not being allowed. And we've mentioned before that leprosy in the Bible is always a symbol of sin or transgression. That meant absolute separation from God. The fall of humanity, you know, going back to Eden makes everybody completely unclean and unacceptable to God. We know that. But then Jesus came. And he demonstrates in the most visible, astonishing ways that he had the power and the authority to simply dismiss them completely as though they didn't exist. So here you've got to understand the mindset. You've got these laws that basically said lepers are so contagious that it's a death sentence to have it, keep them outside of the city. In fact, the the Talmud actually has gives permission there to throw rocks at lepers, oh, well. which is not biblical, I might add, and absolutely not biblical, but it was it was a serious or severe way of making sure that anybody who's got this contagious, deadly, life-threatening disease was never to come near anybody who was clean. Mm. Wow. So you had this mindset of absolute separation, no con- contamination. Remember, if something is clean, is touched by something that is unclean, The clean thing becomes unclean, untouchable, defiled, and unacceptable. It's now corrupted. Okay, but Jesus kind of turns this on his head because, remember, they were waiting for a Messiah who was going to sit with the lepers. Mm. Yet the mindset was stay away from the lepers. Okay, Jesus comes. He turns all of that on his head. His ministry kind of demonstrates a reversal of the laws almost, that you find in Leviticus about clean and unclean. And so he comes and he heals, he cleansed, and he restored them, and he made these people acceptable as opposed to being rejects from mm. the, for society. And usually, again, the unclean thing touches a clean thing and it makes it unclean. But here we have a clean thing, and I don't mean that disrespectfully when I'm speaking of Christ, but you have this clean thing who actually came from an unclean people, the physical human side of Jesus. He comes from an unclean people, but he himself is clean. And he touches that which is unclean and he makes it clean. Yeah, that's right. Well, in the next program, we will be looking at what the expectations were of Messiah with regard to leprosy and other physical disabilities in regard to proving his identity. That's next time on Foundations. This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.